Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the desk today we have this President Jackson that I got from eBay. But before we start, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join the Facebook group, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website, all that lot. And now a quick word about today's video sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay is a China Shenzhen based PCB manufacturer and circuit board assembler. PCBWay are currently enjoying their 10th anniversary with some great promotions on their website. Get coupons for your next order, get an exclusive badge and a coupon, put yourself on a map with other PCB wayers, take part in their charity badge sale where proceeds go to good causes, win some fantastic prizes in their lucky draw. Get an instant quote by visiting pcbway.com or click on the link below and check them out. So here we have our President Jackson with a frequency counter Velcro to the top. Unfortunately this has been made a permanent addition by somebody putting it through the holes at the side. So yeah, would have been nicer if it was on the proper sockets. But I suppose we can't have everything. There's a serial number. Everything else looks good. So I suppose we should fire it up and see what happens. Now you eagle eye people out there might notice something that I completely didn't spot. Let's see if you can find out what it is. It's staring you straight in the face right now. And it's not the stupid blue LED channel display, which is going to come straight out. We're having none of that on this channel. But yeah, the RX light isn't working, but the TX light's working. And when you TX, the frequency is changing on the counter. And the course clarifier doesn't seem to be doing a lot. So the bands are working. But when you TX, it's changing frequency. But we have no RX LED. That's the smoking gun here. But it took me a while to find that. So let's go through. So, looks like our meter's jammed as well. So there's a few things we need to do to get this working. Let's have a look on the frequency counter. The shift doesn't seem to be moving. I suppose it, it's moving correctly on TX, which is bizarre, but it's not moving on RX. Nice healthy power output on TX. We'll do a lot more, but that's good enough for now. So the TX side is working. Looks like we've just got an issue with the RX. So as you can see, the frequency is changing when we're TX. Let's try receive. Nothing. Not a sausage. But it is making a noise. But we've just got no receive. But something is working because the frequency counter's tapped into the VCO. So we know that things are working in there. So I suppose we should have a look inside and see what horrors we've got inside. So this looks like one of those automatic squelch units or noise squelch unit. That's fine, I don't think that's going to be causing our problem. But that's on the, on the squelch on and off there. Let's have a look around the PLL area. Somebody's had some fun and games around those binary adders. Maybe they've been trying to find this problem. Who knows? But yeah, we're going to tidy all that up. 
Seems to be a bit of a cut or a burnt track there. Don't know what that's all about. But yeah, we can make that look a bit better, I think. And that's our diode board. So everything looks okay on there. So we'll lift the front off, get that out of the way. Because we need to address this stupid channel display. I'm just seeing if it was the LED that was actually dry jointed, but it's not. And somebody's left us half a mile of wire on the on the uh, meter bulb. Very nice. Yeah, be okay for heating up next, uh, lighting up next door, I suppose. But we'll address that as well. I suppose let's try and find this fault, I suppose. So where do we start? Let's have a look at this meter to start off with. As you can see, it's absolutely jam solid. So we can slacken it off to get it to move. But unfortunately, it's not going to play. So what we're doing is we're just going through the service manual, just for the alignments, just to make sure it's not an alignment issue. So we're on the, on the test point, on the correct channel, and it should be 16490, which we've got. So that's absolutely fine. Move it to lower sideband this should be 4875 so it's a lot quite a way out but this is because of the problem we have and this should be as you can see this was a, a long way out for upper side band which is 4925 this is all on tp3 which is the lead of r73 and there's the lsb on 4875 which again was an absolute mile out So this got me wondering, why is it so far out? So let's have a look at the 10.692 and 10.695. So that's TP4 and TP5. For 10.695 we need AM transmit. So it's showing RX, but as soon as we hit TX... It's now jumping up again. So alignment hasn't stopped our problem. But this is bizarre. Little did I know that I'd just aligned it for 5 kilohertz above, but never mind. So I just need to make sure that this was correct, and it is. So with some alcohol and a toothbrush, we're going to clean the area up so I can have a good look at it. Let's make sure we've got no nothing going on here. Yeah, it looks better already. So 
so we still have this issue in TX it's jumping 5 kilohertz up and in RX the shift doesn't work very well I know some of you people out there are probably screaming at the monitor now because you probably know exactly what it is but don't worry we're going to get to that because I didn't know what it was at this time so I was just having a look at the output of the VCO frequencies and on transmit and receive it's actually changing which you would expect and it's changing correctly there is no there is no problem with that so there must be something pulling it pulling it down somewhere so I'm just having a look at the the crystal frequencies of the ones we've just aligned and you can see they're changing as well so what is going on well after a bit of investigation this is the course fine and tune you can see that in transmit we have five volts but in receive we have nothing now if we don't have any voltage in receive how is the kc shift going to work well this is our problem we have no receive eight volts and we found the transistor and it's now a diode so where was this transistor so we follow this line down that connects all the RX stage follow it down follow it down comes to TR31 and the one next door to it is the transmitter I believe which was working so I've just tacked a transistor on the back just to try it so I'll try that again and sure enough we switch it on now and the shift is now working and we're now 5 kc's high which you would expect because I'd aligned everything with it 5 kc's below and the LEDs working what a surprise so that was our problem a little transistor and the tran and the frequency counter stays the same in transmit and receive so that's fantastic transistor is not getting hot so we can use that transistor quick receive check and quick transmit check we're working nicely yep beautiful so let's get that transistor in and let's realign it yet again so the shift's working correctly now so let's go back to the same test point which is TP3 and move all those coils down that we've just pulled up so channel 19 band C mode AM FM adjusting L14 for 16490 which is TP3 lead of R73 and then we select the LS, uh, USB put 4925 and then LSB which we're going to do on 4875 
can see they're very very touchy but this thing does need to warm up a little bit so just just going over them readjusting as it warms up getting them as close as we can so USB 4925 And onto LSB four eight seven five. Yep, close as. As you can see, this control is very very touchy. And here we go. That'll do. It's just close enough. Very nice. Now onto the meter. As I was transmitting and receiving, the meter wasn't working. So we've got a replacement there. That we're going to fit in its place. And also, we're going to get rid of this stupid blue display. Why anybody thinks putting a blue channel display in looks good. I don't know, I suppose it's down to a personal taste, but it's not for me, it's coming out. I'll send that off to Chris Peel, he'll like that. And there's a beautiful red one put back in its place. So we'll put it back in. Very nice. It's receiving nicely now. Perfect. And the needle's moving correctly. Yep. Perfect. Quick check with the signal generator. Let's get it on. On an S9 for minus 72 dB or roundabout. Nice or uh, nice power output. Nice 25, 27 watts on on SSB. Very nice, very healthy. So we're giving it a clean up. Got rid of all those silly orange stickers. Just needs a little bit more attention on the buttons. And it's working beautifully. So, that was a good repair. I like that. So there's our Jackson. Nicely finished. Happy with that. It's working well. Good output. Sounds really nice. And working as intended. But anyway, as always, if you like the video, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join the Facebook group, join Patreon, buy me a coffee, have a look at my website. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.